I'm Mrs. Robertson and I help with the skills. And we, I'm going to show today an indwelling catheter and a straight cath with lab to be obtained. Um, we're going to start with the indwelling catheter first. And so what you would want to do is be sure and go and look at your order. You need to make sure you have an order for either an indwelling or a straight cath. Uh, whichever one it is, that's what you would uh, do. When you do get the order, you also want to look at some of the vital signs and know something about your patient. Once you've got that done, you're going to go and wash your hands. Once you've washed your hands, you're going to go to the supply room and get your supply. And as far as this supply, you're going to look to see what size it is. And if the doctor specified a size, then you would want to make sure you got the size. This is a 14 French. And also on here, you're going to look for the expiration date, and it's right here. When you do get your kit, you also want to make sure that it's completely sealed and that there's no openings or it hasn't been opened. Once you have that, then you can go to your patient's room. When you enter the room, when you walk into the room, you're going to introduce that you're going to wash your hands. You'll GIE the patient and let her know that the doctor's wrote an order for an indwelling catheter to be placed. Uh, when you, upon doing that, you may even ask the patient at that time if they've had a, a catheter placed before. That way you know kind of what she understands about it and what to expect. If not, you need to explain the procedure a little bit to the patient because that will kind of take down the stress level of the catheter placement. Plus, you'll be able to uh, maybe help and assist with it by holding her legs and knowing what she needs to do. Uh, once you get to that part, uh, you're going to go ahead and you're going to look at the armband and just kind of check the allergies and check the patient, ID the patient, and see if there are delay ticks, betadine, peanuts, uh, shellfish, uh, or tape. After you GIE the patient, then you can go ahead and let's get the patient up to a working position for you. Also, you need to make sure that you have the room with the door shut to give the patient as much privacy as you can. Uh, make sure that the lights are on so you can visualize and have everything where you can, uh, once you start to place the caffeine, to have good visual lighting. Once that's done, you have your kit here. We've already checked that. So we're gonna, we've already explained to the patient. We're going to go ahead and get the patient ready for the catheter to be placed. If you do have towel drapes where you can drape the patient's legs, then you can do that. If not, I recommend going ahead because if you put the covers up and she moves, then the covers can fall back on your clean field or your stool field. What we're going to do then is get the patient ready for positioning the patient, ready for the catheter. You need to explain to the patient that she's going to have to um, have uh, keep the legs in the actually bent position. She's going to be supine, but uh, she needs to have her legs bent, and we're going to place our stool field here in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and lower the feet because they tend to be up. And I'm going to go ahead and raise the bed up just a little more for me. Okay, now I'm going to wash my hands again before I open the package. Now we can go ahead and open the package. And usually there is a little perforated place so that you can tear it. A lot of times you can go ahead and you can keep this. It kind of gives you the information on your phone. And it's a 14 frame, so you don't forget to chart that. Okay. We go ahead and we're going to go ahead and take this and we're going to place it here on this side. If you're going to be doing it, usually I'll go ahead and go across to this tip, the opposite tip you're working from. That way you don't cross this way and tend to contend. All right, then this is your insertion and date of insertion. This is a tag. We go like that there. Okay, we're going to open away. We're going to open away from us first. And you have that one inch border that we were telling you about. I'm 
going to do is I'm going to square it off just a little so that I don't have a place where I can put my gloves on. And here's the cut glove, and every kit's placed a little different. So then you have your drape that you'll go between the patient's legs. It'll give you a little still feel. You're going to have the shiny side towards you. You're going to take the two, the tips at each one. You're going to place it between the legs. If the patient can raise her hips, which this mannequin cannot spread any further. So, but if the patient can, then you can place it as close to the hip as you can. Leave it where it's at so you don't contaminate the field. Uh, and once it's down, it's down. And so the next is the fenestrated drape, which has the opening where you can either put it over the peri area and you can clean that area or I usually use it just to remind myself to clean off the extra KY jelly or the bed of diamond make it there. Okay, now we're going to come over and we're going to go ahead and put the steel gloves on so that we can get in the steel gloves. I'm going to pick it up by the cuff, hold it up, and look for the thumb. Okay. My little finger's not all the way in there, but I can do it when I get it. Now we're going to go under the cuff of the next hand. We're going to abduct the thumb or do the hitch on the thumb. Okay, and once the gloves are on, now you're ready to get into your stool field. Okay, so once you remove, you've got to stay within your one inch border. And here's your saline that you will check your bulb and inflate with. And here's your two sets of swabs that you can use to clean with. Since you have two sets of swabs, if you have it where you've got three to a package, you can clean the uh, Majora, the Labia Majora, and the Labia Minora both on both sides. And here is the KY. I'm going to go ahead and open this KY so that we can uh, lubricate our bowie with it. And I'm going to put it in my tray right there. Okay. Once it's in there, I'm going to just drop it over here. I'm going to go ahead and open the things. And I'm going to go ahead and just set them in here because this is all sterile fill. That way I can just pick it up. Now I'm going to go ahead and check the bowl. I'm going to go ahead and get my catheter ready. Twist it here, so I'm going to untwist it. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it because I'm going to go ahead and pre-lubricate my catheter too. So when I transfer it, all be done. You need to wrap it around your hand because these are very flimsy and they'll go everywhere. So you need to have control over it. Then you're going to take where your ball goes, you're going to go ahead and push it on, and then you're going to just slide it out. You need to untwist it though, because if you don't, it's going to spray back on you. And then we'll check the ball. It's getting, there may be a time where we will not be doing this, and some hospital policies or particular companies have been pre-tested these balls. So we're going to go ahead and check the balloon, and See if it inflates without any leak. And there's not. So we can go ahead and you can deflate that, take it back out. Okay, so I just deflated the ball. And now we're going to go ahead and remove the excess air. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and attach. We're going to put everything back into the case of the tray. Okay, now you're going to take the tart part of the tray and we're going to set it on the bottom. And then we're just going to go ahead and we're going to move it over to the center. Okay, you don't want to touch the arms of the, I mean the legs. And you're going to have to remember that one hand will be considered contaminated. And if you're a right hand like me, then you're going to insert with the right hand. Once you put your hand on uh, the labia to spread it, you cannot take the hand off. If you do and remove it, then the labia folds back over the insertion where you're going to insert over the meatus and it's going to be considered contaminated you're going to have to re-clean. So you want to make sure once you get your hand placed that you keep it and you keep it positioned. So what we're going to do, we're going to move back the uh, labia. Okay. 
you're going to visualize where you're going at this time. So now you're ready to take your swabs with your um, cleaning swab, and you're going to clean because you have plenty the majora. So you're going to go the farthest away and clean the labia majora. You can cross and do this. Don't cross over the field this way. Try to do it this way. Then you're going to come over to this side and clean the labia majora. Then you're going to go and you're going to clean the labia minora. Then you're going to clean the other labia minora. Then you're going to go straight down the meatus. Okay. Now you're ready to insert. So what you can do is you have your tray that you're going to have to lubricate. So if you can lubricate, make sure you don't touch the patient with the tube. You're going to have to get close enough so you have control over the tube. And now it's ready to insert. You're going to ask your patient to take a deep breath and to get on there again, and then you're ready to place. And once you get about two to three inches in, make sure you don't touch the foley. Once you get two to three inches in, you should see urine. If you do, go another inch, hold it. You're going to place the fluid. Okay. Once you've got the fluid placed, you're going to get a gentle tuck. Just a little gentle tuck. Once you've done that, then you can release and come down and disconnect. Now you're through with that part. If you want to, you can go ahead and move this off. You can go ahead and take this to clean your patient from the extra KY Betadine. And now you're ready to go ahead and secure your CE bath. Okay. If you want to, you take to the inner thigh. Sometimes even these have a little place on the tubing here that you can connect. Depending on where it is, you can pull it down. Don't ever hang the bag to the sidewall. Always hang it. And I don't ever hang it to the draw sheet because if somebody's not careful and they come, they can pull and use the draw sheet and use it and pull the catheter. So you want to hang it to the bed frame itself. Don't ever leave one on the floor. Don't lay it on the floor. Like I said, secure it. Also, on the patient, don't ever uh, lay, keep the bag above the bladder because it will go back into the uh, urine, go back into the bladder, and that can cause a source of infection. So now we're through. We've cleaned the patient. We can move this. We can move this. Go ahead and get the patient comfortable. Position her again. Your gown, gown. Now what we're going to note to see how much urine we get too, we're going to see that the urine is still flowing. We're going to go ahead and cover the patient. Get her in a comfortable position. We're going to lower her bed for safety. Okay. And we're going to make sure the side wheels are still secure enough. Make sure the bed is locked. One thing we want to make sure and ask the patient if she has any needs at the time, if she's okay, if she, how she tolerated it. And we're also now going to get our mess cleaned up. And we're able to dispose of this. Once we're through with that, go ahead and wash your hands. And make sure the patient is still in the safe position. Recheck, make sure safety locks and everything for our second check. Okay, and on, doc, on your documentation, when you get ready after you've made sure the patient um, has no needs and they're in the safe position and everything, you need to go, when you go out, you need to make sure you document how the patient tolerated it. You need to make sure that you document that you kept sterile uh, technique throughout the procedure. You need to also document um, the top foley and the foley size that you use and also that you placed uh, 10 mils or whatever the policy recommends or according to even the size of the foley, you may place more. So you need to be sure and document that. Uh, you need to document uh, what you obtained after you placed the foley. Uh, what color was the urine? Was it uh, dark, amber, yellow? Uh, the clarity of it, was it clear, was it cloudy, 
Uh, if it had sediment, stuff that you need to be sure and document everything as far as the urine and what you got back. Uh, you need to be sure and document the amount of the urine that you obtained. Uh, once you've documented all that, you need to also document that you left your patient in a safe position with rails up, bed in low position, and uh, brakes locked. 